Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and in this video, we are going to be taking a look at the CCM CPW46. Now, this is another console-friendly truck from the brains over at the CCM workshop, and what it basically is, is a updated console-friendly version of the Power Wagon that they did way back when they originally first released theirs. Now, this truck, like I said, it may look similar to their old Power Wagon, but there are so many things about it that are very different. So, we're going to go ahead and dive straight into the customization, but we are not on our normal testing map today. We are on the CTFT Proving Grounds, which as I record this video, was recently approved for consoles. So if you guys want to check this map out, it is actually available on your console mod browser, and there's a lot of different things that you can do. You have this particular summer testing environment, but you also have a winter testing environment along with a, a whole separate map completely dedicated to drag racing. So now let's go ahead and head straight into the customization. So we're going to go ahead and start with this 273 V8. And then we have a 318 V8. Then we have a 383 big block. Then we have a 383 performance edition. So we're going to go with that, which is going to give us a S plus power to weight rating. Then we're going to go with a, so there's a five speed, a six speed, a four speed, and an eight speed. Now, the 8-speed is pretty much going to be your do-it-all, get everything done, like be able to go on trails and go fast and go around a racetrack. This pretty much can do all of that. So we're going to go ahead and go with the 8-speed. And then suspension-wise, the stock one already sits pretty high. So then when you go to the raised, that raises it up even more. And you can also see that we're dealing with a really big set of axles. We've got spring over. We've got axle brakes. These are literally ready to get like thrown around out in the wilderness then we have the stadium series which is more designed for tracks and jumps and then finally we have the tuned custom which i'm going to assume at least at this point that that's going to be sort of your more crawler slash flexed base uh, or flex based setup so i think i'm going to go with the i think i'm going to go with the raised first and then we'll go from there so raise is going to go on, and you start with a 39-inch all-terrain, but that quickly goes up. Now, your all-terrains are all going to be standard in-game tread compounds, but when you get further down the list, you start to see some really interesting stuff. Like this, for example, the 39-inch paddle tire. It's a very odd design. You also have this 39-inch mud tire. Once again, odd design, but very unique. You have these clamshells, which are very interesting. You have the, like, even crazier paddle tire, which is basically an actual, like, it's basically a hook. Like, literally, the tread compound is a hook, like a scoop. And then you have a 39-inch bogger, which that is a very unique design for a bogger. And then you have these square lug tires. And then the list restarts in the 43-inch tire size. And then you can go down to the bottom and continue into the mud tire category, which these tires, you guys know because you've seen them on other vehicles, as you have with these. But then you also have, finally, your chained tires, which are pretty much a all-terrain with chains around them. So... Let's go back to our off-road tire compounds, and we're going to start with, actually, we're going to start with the 43-inch square lug. Very, very odd tire, but I'm really excited to see what it can do. Now we'll do the, let's see, winch length slash power plus tall front-facing snorkel, and in the, tr uh, I sh shouldn't really say the trunk, but the bed, we have trunk repair supplies, that's why it's confusing, and then trunk repair supplies, again, which are probably supposed to go on some kind of rack, and then the small roof rack up top. Now, we're not really going to use any of those, because right now we're just in a testing environment, we're not in a campaign environment, but the ability to use that kind of stuff is there. Now, let's see, hood panels, you can take those off if you so desire, and expose the engine, which is really, really cool. You can also, oops, you can also take those running boards off if you really want to, but I think they actually look pretty good. And then you can throw a bed rack on there if you really want to for some extended usability out in the field in a campaign session. So now you have generic wheel, heavy truck wheel, and MSH rims 3, which definitely that is not the original version of that. They've definitely been replaced. But the heavy machinery wheels are really, really cool, and I'm kind of debating on going with those and then almost color matching the truck. Let's see. Oh, but the shades of yellow don't line up. No. Oh, I wish those shades of yellow lined up. But actually, that works, though. I think that works. Now, unfortunately, you don't really have any interior customization, but that's all good. I mean, this is probably going to be one of those trucks where you're going to want to be outside of it most of the time anyway. 
So now, let's go ahead and fire it up and see what it can do. It's definitely got some torque off the line. I mean, you can really tell that it's making that suspension dig like the second you get into the power. God, it is very slippy on pavement, though, with these tires. Very, very slippy. You can tell that it wants to get off of the pavement and into the rocks and dirt. Now, this jump over here is definitely a great place to start. And since we have our dev tools, we can go ahead and actually swap out the suspension for the stadium and stadium slash jump focused suspension. Back up a little bit and send it and see what she does. Sixth gear. Seventh gear. Come on. Whoa! Dude, the way that absorbs landings is awesome. That is absolutely incredible, and I cannot say enough good things about how well that just did. So now we're going to go to the ultimate suspension, which I believe is what we had before. We had the tuned custom, and I'm pretty sure that's what the ultimate ends up being. But now we're going to go ahead and take this ring road back to see how it does both in the mud and in some rocks, which are basically both at the end of this testing road. Now let's see. We've got some pipes and rocks and stuff like that over there, obstacle-wise. We're not really going to focus on those all that much, but let me know in the comment section down below if you guys have tried this map out for yourselves, especially considering the fact that this map, again, as I record this video, is available on consoles. And if you have tried it out, let me know what you thought of it. Let me know if you enjoyed it. So this road right here will actually take you over to a mud pit, but we're not going to follow that. Instead, we're going to go to this basically rolling articulation test and see how the truck does running through here. So I'm going to put it in low. Oh, that actually works really well. It literally looks like it's just walking. That's super cool to watch. Look at that. It's so satisfying, too. Like, it's one of those things that you would literally file under the category of oddly satisfying. Genuinely, bro. Genuinely. Look at that articulation. Yeah, the tuned custom or the ultimate is definitely, definitely the one I would use in a situation like on a trail or in the rocks where I needed that extra flex for sure. Easy. Not bad. And then you kick the clutch a couple of times and you just rage right out of there. Now, since we're coming up to some mud, I'm curious. I'm going to go ahead and go into the garage and then, and then, I'm going to actually switch some things up. So we got the square lugs. Let's go to these boggers before we get into the mud. Now, these boggers are like, I mean, that is one of the gnarliest looking tread designs I have ever seen. So I really hope that they have the mud performance to back themselves up. Let's find out. Oh, yeah. Well, there we go. We were just, I think our wheel speed was just a little high. Well, you don't really have much on the dash. It's very basic, but the steering wheel does work. Easing it through. It does a really good job, though. Like, and it actually feels pretty realistic, pretty believable, because, like, the deeper the mud gets, the slower you end up going. Like, if we were to, if we were to end up going out here, it would probably get a lot slower. Yeah, it definitely needed to go down to first gear for that. And low versus low plus doesn't really make all that much of a difference. And I think that's one of those that's one of those elements where you're like, oh, okay, yeah, this was definitely designed to feel realistic. But then again, you've also got that eight-speed gearbox and you've got that stadium suspension, so you can really use it for whatever you want to use it for, whether you like some retro rock crawling or if you like, you know, to use your retro rig as the basis for a race truck. It really does allow you to kind of explore all of those different possibilities. And then, when you get into... Ooh. Oh, we should totally take this rock route. I'm going to break off from that route just a little bit. I'm going to actually switch up tires again. Because I like these tires a lot, but I want to try a good variety of tires. So, let's see. Now, what about the standard... Mm, the mud tire probably isn't the best for this. Let's actually go back to the square lug and see how that does on the rocks. God, it's got so much torque. I cannot wait for console players to get their hands on this thing. Easy. Wow, dude, that's incredible. Could probably reduce that wheel speed a little bit. Yeah, reducing the wheel speed definitely helps. I mean, remember, speed and power isn't always the answer. I mean, it may be the answer in the world of Diesel Addict, but, you know, I mean, <laughs> I guess that depends on how big your run-up is to an obstacle. But at the end of the day, dude, like, 
this thing is so much fun. And the amount of different purposes that it has, the amount of different things you can use it for, is really, really wide. Like, you can use it as a supporting scout vehicle with repair points and fuel points and stuff like that in a campaign playthrough. Or you can use it for just having fun with your friends, doing stuff like this. And since it's a CCM mod, it shouldn't actually take that much RAM to run. And so it should be a lot easier for you to use it both in multiplayer and uh, with a larger amount of trucks if you're using it in single player. And man, that flex is super respectable. Look at that. And these tires, when they're fully flexed out... They just barely clear the fender line. Like, you can tell some proper time and effort and engineering went into this setup. That is legit. That is so nice. I'm gonna go up and over this edge now. What's interesting about this map is, like, it doesn't look like it ends, but, like, he makes sure to give you those little barriers to tell you, like, hey, you're getting close to the edge of the play area there, bud. Like, you should probably watch yourself. God, it's so much fun to drive, though. And that's one of the biggest things is, like, I could see myself coming back to this truck over and over and over because it's so much fun to drive. And all of these updates over the previous version, and especially the fact that this one is now fully console-friendly, that's huge because, at the end of the day, that just means that everybody will be able to enjoy this truck. Of course, once it gets approved. And once it does get approved, I will update the video, uh, actually, with a pinned comment to let you guys know whether or not it has been approved. So, let's go ahead and see if we can make this thing run down this trail with some extra pace real quick. Whoa! Alright. Well, I think we found the quote-unquote tipping point of this truck. Yeah, definitely found the tipping point of it for sure. Where are the winch points? Did I... Did I not add a winch? Let's see. Length plus. Try that. Let's try that. I wonder, does this winch, like, actually not work? Whoa! I hope we haven't discovered, like, a massive glitch in this mod. Okay, not that works. The other one must have just had either no winch points, you know, that were close enough. Or maybe, potentially, it just was not happy with that particular type of winch. Let's put the stadium suspension back on it real quick. I want to try something. This ramp has me, uh, has me very excited and curious. Send it! Oh, no! It does not like that ramp angle. Like, that particular kick angle of that ramp, it does not like it one bit. Let's see. Tuned Custom Stadium Series. Oh. Oh. Okay. So, it doesn't actually like that tire size. And I think if we were going to actually use the stadium suspension normally, we would probably go down to, like, a 39, maybe. And I think probably a good tire for that. That would be, yeah, the 39 square lug and then go to the Stadium Series, and then after that, I'd probably put the, well, hmm, now, now I've got myself, like, kind of second-guessing that a little bit, like, second-guessing that particular decision, so let's go back, and we'll put these wheels on it, it's a very interesting look, it's a very interesting design, but it probably would work better with these 39-inch wheels and tires, as opposed to, or, as opposed to the really large ones, it handles well, though. It handles actually really well with the stadium setup. Dude, look at that. Oh, 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 no! We almost fully 360'd that. And I'm kind of, like, I'm kind of impressed that it didn't flip itself over. That's actually really good. It takes a lot to make a vehicle not flip over like that. Is that a little, like, almost like a little mini racetrack? Bro, we need to go test out this stadium suspension. That would be so sick. I wonder how this does at the TNB Trails racetrack. I bet you it's a blast out there. I was trying to pick up a little, like, a front wheel off the ground. Oh, that's legit. All right, let's see how it runs through here. Oh, my God, yeah. No, this suspension was definitely designed for the smaller tires. And it loves them, dude. Yo, look at that. It's like sliding the rear end around the corners. That is sick. Oh, God. Way too much speed into that corner. Got into a heavy understeer situation. Usually, I like to try to avoid understeer situations. Whoa! Whoa! It, like, torqued itself up like a trophy truck. That is so freaking cool. Oh, God. Whoa. That was a little bit more angle than I wanted, but that's all good. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions on this thing in the comments down below. And, of course, also let me know your thoughts and opinions on this map and if you have used it or not. And if you're new to this channel and you would like to see more, make sure you click that subscribe button and turn those notifications on. And I will see you guys next time. Talk to you all later.